Molly, dear, I'm so sorry to hear that your husband passed away suddenly in a car accident. I know you must be in great pain, and my heart goes out to you during this difficult time. Please know that you're not alone in this. I'm here for you if you need anything. Thanks, Mom. I really appreciate your thoughtfulness towards me. Honestly, I couldn't imagine such a tragedy could happen to my husband out of nowhere. I'm still processing what happened, but I know that only by being strong will I be able to get through this challenging time in my life. Excuse me if I'm being rude or nosy, but I heard that you lost your house due to your husband's wrong choice of investment. Is that right? Yes, it's true what you just said. I only found out about that until recently. But how did you know about that, Mom? Oh, come on, darling. When are you going to stop withholding that secret from your own mother? You know I always have a nose for information, right? Honestly, why did you even consider concealing such a devastating piece of knowledge from me? As your mother, I am entitled to be aware of every aspect of your life. I'm sorry, Mom. I just didn't want to bother you. The truth is, my husband had been involved in stock market investments. He experienced significant gains on a few occasions, amassing a considerable amount of money. After that, I told him to stop, but he didn't take my advice. He went behind my back, mortgaged our house, and invested all the loaned funds into stocks. Unfortunately, those stocks took a downward turn, causing my husband to lose all of the money. My God, that's terrible. How could Hudson do such a thing to you? I'm so sorry. He deserves to rot in hell for what he did to my poor precious daughter. Serves him right. You're still young. You have your whole life ahead of you. I'm sure you'll be able to find yourself a new and worthier man of your time. Mom, please don't say that. I know what Hudson did to me was wrong, but now he's no longer with us. I believe it's best to forgive and forget the past. All right, my dear, if you insist. I simply express what crosses my mind out of my genuine concern for you. Nothing more. You understand that it's not personal, don't you? Look, Molly, have you found a place to settle in? Not yet. I'm still looking. But it's rather difficult to find one that fits my budget. As you may know, I only have a part-time job at the moment. And I don't earn that much. I honestly want to secure a full-time job to earn more, but I'm already in the third trimester of my pregnancy. So I think it's best to avoid overexerting myself with excessive work. You know what? That's perfect. Why don't you move in and live with me and your sister Sharon? I mean, your father left us this house as an inheritance after he passed away. So of course you're welcome to stay there. Are you sure, Mom? I really don't want to cause you or Sharon any trouble. I mean, not only am I heavily pregnant, but your share of the housework could probably go up too if I moved in with you two. What are you talking about, my dear? I guarantee that you won't cause us any problems. I know that my house isn't very spacious, but I'll make sure to make you feel just as comfortable as you would be at home. You're pregnant, so you shouldn't be going out there all by yourself and looking for a house. It would take too much of your time and energy. Come on, I insist. Living with me and your sister is the best option you have. Oh, I see, Mom. I truly appreciate your support when I need it the most. In that case, I believe it would be best for me to move in and live with you both. When do you think would be the most convenient time for me to shift my belongings to your place? Molly, don't be so formal and distant towards your own family like that. You know it breaks my heart to see you suffer like this. And I would do anything in my power to help you in the best way I can. As for the time of your arrival, just come by and drop off your belongings at our house anytime you want to. No need to rush. But of course, the sooner the better for you. Mom, I really don't know what to say. I'm so grateful for your help. Especially right now when I'm feeling so lost and alone. I don't know what I would do without you. Now, now, dear. Please relax and be yourself. You know your sister and I are always willing to welcome you with open arms, don't you? In fact, we're so glad you could come. We've missed you. That's so kind of you. I'll be moving in with you and Sharon by the end of the week. Is that okay with you? That's perfect timing, sweetheart. I'll be holding a party to celebrate your return home after a long time. Sharon and I are looking forward to catching up and spending time with you. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun together. Rise and shine, my dear. It's time to wake up and start making the best use of yourself. Mom, but it's only four in the morning. Isn't it too early to wake up? What are you saying, Molly? 
Oh, I completely forgot. You've been away for too long, so you must have forgotten the norms and rules of this house. In this house, we don't tolerate laziness. Any form of laziness is not accepted. On the contrary, everyone in this household has to contribute their fair share of work. This is how we maintain a harmonious coexistence. Do you understand? Oh, okay. I see. I'm sorry, but can I sleep a little while longer? You know I'm still exhausted from unpacking my belongings yesterday. So I'd prefer to stay in bed for a couple more hours to regain my strength. Didn't I make it perfectly clear? Any form of procrastination is strictly prohibited in this family. Every individual has a responsibility to fulfill their assigned tasks. And you are no exception, Molly. Now hurry up and get on your big ass and start working like an adult! Huh? Are you being a little rude to me? Mom, I understood your point. You didn't have to bang on my door so loudly and brutally. Really? Did you actually understand what I mean? I haven't seen you come out of your room and start doing your job. Hell, I didn't even see you open the door for me. Open this goddamn door now, you eternal sloth. Don't think that hiding in your room will let you get away with shirking your responsibilities as my daughter. Seriously, Mom? I didn't utter a single word about slacking off on my duties. So please don't put words in my mouth. So you're telling me that the only thing you can do is talk back to your own parents? Remember, I'm the one who's kind enough to let you stay in this house. So start pulling your socks up and repay my kindness by taking on the housework. What? I'm not talking back to you at all. I was just pointing out a fact. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Well, why don't you ask yourself that question? Honestly, you should be making more of an effort to move around the house and be more active. You want to give birth to a healthy baby, right? To achieve that, you must be fit and healthy yourself. Simply lazing about in bed all day won't contribute to your overall health. In fact, it'll be detrimental for you. Besides, your sister and I happen to have slim petite figures and we take pride in our appearances. Your excess weight will do nothing but tarnish our family's image in the eyes of others. I'm sorry, but as a pregnant woman, I think it's best for me to prioritize the well-being of my child over my appearance or any other concerns. As a matter of fact, it's essential that I dedicate enough time to rest and relax my body to ensure a healthy pregnancy. Excuse me? Do you expect me to actually believe the nonsense you've just made up on the spot? Haven't you seen the portrayal of pregnant women on television, the internet, or in the magazines? Nowadays, these women are getting a lot slimmer. But you, Molly, on the other hand, have ballooned to sizes previously unimaginable. What are you implying, Mom? I'm not significantly larger in size, especially when compared to other pregnant women. I haven't finished speaking, Molly. Surely you're not intending to interrupt while your mother is delivering a lecture, are you? I'll tell you what, starting from now, I'm gonna put you through a comprehensive training program to help regain your former slim body. I guarantee when I'm done with you, you won't be able to recognize yourself anymore. You should feel lucky because not everyone has the privilege of following my expert guidance and boundless wisdom on how to maintain an extraordinary physique. Sorry, mom, but I don't think I need to follow your specific training regimen to maintain my body's well-being. I feel perfectly fine, and I intend to address any weight concerns only after giving birth to my child. As of now, I easily become fatigued even with minimal activity. That's why my focus will be on getting ample rest and engaging in light exercises suitable for pregnant women. Say no more, honey. I've already made up my mind. And I know just the right starting exercise to get you used to your new training regimen. You should start burning your excess body weight by cleaning the attic and basement. Those places are filthy. They haven't been cleaned in ages. They're dark, dusty, and cluttered with old furniture and boxes. The floors are covered in cobwebs, the air is stale and musty, and there are even rats. I'm sure there's a lot of work that needs to be done. However, dear, please keep in mind that you only have one hour to finish your cleaning tasks because there are still numerous other chores awaiting your attention. So chop chop! No time to lose. Excuse me? Why do you expect me to clean the attic and basement when I'm so heavily pregnant? And in only one hour? That doesn't sound right to me at all. What's so surprising? That's part of your training, you know. Come on, I know you can do this. 
Just focus and work efficiently and you'll be done in no time. There's one more little detail that I need you to keep in mind. No cleaning equipment is allowed. Everything must be done manually in order for the training to be effective. That means cleaning the floor with a regular cloth, sweeping the floors with a broom and dustpan, and removing the dirt with a duster. Just like the good old days. There's no finer way to burn calories than doing housework the right way. Let's get going, honey. We have a mile-long list of other chores that need to be taken care of. Are you seriously kidding me, Mom? Do you really expect me to do all of that manually? Molly, what's with the attitude, young lady? What did I say about butting in when your mother's speaking to you? I'm the owner of this house, mind you. It's so rude and disrespectful of you. That kind of attitude will get you nowhere in life. Where was I? Oh, after cleaning the attic and basement, I also need you to take out the trash, clean the oven and the fridge, and do some yard work. Nowadays, everyone has bad posture from too much sitting and screen gazing, and these chores are excellent for pelvic realignment. Look, Mom, I still think it's too much work for me to handle. Even normal people would shake their heads at the idea of doing all the chores you've just assigned me in only one day. In just one day? What are you talking about? Keep in mind that you only have until sunrise, which is approximately 6.30, to complete all these tasks. If you don't, please be aware that there will be a special consequence awaiting you, dear. Pardon me? Was your intention all along to have me move in just so you could treat me as your personal servant? <gasps> what are you talking about, Molly? You're being disrespectful to your own mother! Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately and seen what you've become? You've become nothing more than a big blubbery manatee! Excuse me? What did you just call me? I don't particularly appreciate being called names, Mom. There's no need to get so easily offended, silly. That's what we used to call fat pregnant women back in the good old days. Please don't take it personal. I'm only trying to motivate you. I mean, come on. Isn't it the best to get as fit and healthy as possible before the baby arrives rather than waiting until you're overwhelmed with childcare and having little time for yourself? I already told you. I have my own way of taking care of my well-being and health, and I honestly just don't need your guidance or input on the matter. Oh, you really are stubborn, Molly. If you keep acting like this, sooner or later your child will become a big porky lardass like yourself. Look at you now. You're about the size of Africa. Do you know what that means? It means less stuffing food in that pie hole you call a mouth and more moving, manatee. Oh my god, Mom. Do you even realize that I'm eight months pregnant? Of course my body is going to be bigger than before. I'm carrying a nearly fully grown baby in my belly after all. When will you stop making these endless excuses? Carrying a child is not enough to justify being a porker. Can't you see? I'm only saying these things because I care deeply about you. You may think I'm being strict on you now, but one day when you look back on this time, you'll have to admit to yourself that you have the best mother in the whole wide world. Anyways. Enough with the idle chit-chat. I need less complaining and more moving. Go, go, go! Sharon, do you know what happened to my dinner? I stepped out for a little while and returned to find all of the food that was on the table mysteriously gone. I don't see you or mom around either. Where are you both at the moment? Oh, mom and I just finished dinner and went outside. We're heading to a nearby mall for shopping, but have you forgotten? Mom said that from today onwards, you're not allowed to take in any more food. That's why she threw your dinner in the trash. She did what? How could she? She has a point though. You're so porky. Fasting for a while would do you a lot of good. I mean, who needs food when you're carrying around all that blubber? Seriously, you need to pay more attention when mom speaks to you. Oh, sure, I forgot. You're so fat that food is all you ever care about. I bet that you have some Cheetos in your ears. That's why you can't hear other people say anything anymore. Or maybe it's just your brain that got all sludgy with fat. Are you kidding me? I'm not allowed to eat from now on? I'm pregnant for heaven's sake. I need nutrients to make sure that my baby grows healthy. Do you expect me to starve myself to death or what? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Yeah, you're pregnant, so what? What's so special about it? Everyone can get pregnant. Hell, even pigs are better at producing than you do. All you do is laze around the house all day. So much you'd make a sloth jealous. Remember whose house you're living in, Molly? It's mine and mom's house, so know your place. Are you being serious? 
You're accusing me of being lazy around the house when in fact it's both you and mom who are not contributing to the household chores? What exactly do you do besides going shopping, going to the spa, or getting your hair and nails done? And don't even think I don't know you've been stealing the food and milk I bought for myself and my unborn baby. Stealing? Taking things from family isn't considered stealing. You're living in my house so you need to follow my rules. What belongs to you also belongs to me and mom. So get used to it. Besides, you're so fat that your whole body jiggles when you walk anyway. A big tub of lard like you shouldn't be eating anything at all. If I were you, I would seriously starve myself. It's time you lose some weight. Fat pig, it's disgusting the way you look right now. Is this how you choose to treat me? Do you have any idea how hard I worked to provide for you and mom before I got pregnant? Let me remind you that almost every penny I earned was directly contributed to support our family. You are basically living off my paycheck. And now when I'm at my wit's end, you turn your back against me and bite the hands that fed you? What paycheck? I don't recall you sending any money to me and mom. So stop making things up, silly. Oh yeah, now I remember. You did send me and mom some pity cash, but it didn't amount to anything. It was literally loose change. Even beggars would turn down that kind of money. Seriously, how can you be proud of that? Excuse me, loose change? I had been sending mom $2,000 every month for the last 10 years before I became pregnant. 10 years, you know. Oh, look at the way Miss Porky talks about earning some nickels and dimes like some kind of big deal. Why don't you shut your mouth already? You really are a pain in the neck. Listen up, manatee. Mom and I will be home late, but we still expect the housework to be completed by the time we arrive. There's a stack of dirty clothes, dishes that require washing, the toilet needs cleaning, and the cat litter needs to be changed. No way. I'm not gonna do any of that. I've been handling all the domestic chores in this house since the day I moved here while you and mom just sit there and enjoy the fruit of my labor without so much a thank you. I'm not your housekeeper and I'll move out of this house soon. So you need to start figuring things out for yourself. Blah, blah, blah. No excuses, you hunk of lard. Didn't mom tell you? You need to exercise more because you're making all women look bad. It's because women like you that men have commitment issues. By the way, mom also told you to go to Quick Mart Express in the next town to buy her some groceries. She also specifically told you to go on foot, not by train or anything else, on foot, remember? Are you seriously telling me to walk to the Quick Mart Express in the next town? It would take at least two to three hours. Oh, come on, look at how lazy you are. It's only a nice brisk walk. So stop being such a drama queen. Now move, you tub of lard. Why haven't you come back yet, you big blubbery manatee? It's already past dinner time. You should be here in our house by now to make us food. Wait, are you planning to slack off? Not so easy, fat pig. You're living in my house and that means you need to follow my rules. Remember, I'm your superior the mistress and the matriarch of this household. Come on, Miss Porky. I know you're there. Don't try to hide from me anymore. Hurry up and get your lardy ass home. Oink, oink. What do you want now, Allison? Now it's not a good time. <gasps> what did you just say? Is that any way to speak to your own mother? Correct your behavior and start responding to me properly. Who do you think you are leaving my messages on red? That's disrespectful, pure and simple. Back in my days, we got the cane for that kind of thing. I already told you, I'm not available at the moment. Excuse me, how could you possibly be so desperately busy that you're unable to reply to your own mother? Is there something more important than replying to me? Your mother, the head of this house? I'm deeply disappointed in you, Molly. Are you seriously asking me that question? After what you did to me, your own daughter? What did I do? I can't even remember. All I know is that it's already past dinner time and I'm starving. Come back home immediately and cook me dinner. Don't make me repeat myself. You're a monster. You nagged at me, berated me just because I took a bus to the convenience store to buy the groceries you asked me to. And just when I didn't pay attention, you ruthlessly kicked me down the stairs. Do you even realize that you almost caused me to lose my baby? Oh yeah, now I remember. I remember you barreling down the stairs like a bowling ball. I'm surprised the neighbors didn't think a herd of elephants was stampeding through our house. It was truly a spectacular sight to behold. You're truly disgusting, Allison. I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. Wait, what? 
Why are you leaving? You're so good at being my personal slave. You shouldn't be leaving at times like this. If you leave, who's going to take care of the household chores from now on? Who's going to wash the dishes? Clean the toilet? Scrub the floors and make food for me and my dear daughter Sharon? Why should I care about that? Figure it out yourself. You were doing just fine before I moved in. So what's the problem? Fine then, but remember as soon as your ugly baby is born, you have to go back to working full time and send me $2,000 per month again. No slacking off anymore. I feel sorry for you though, Molly. What are you gonna do now that you don't have anyone to make fat jokes about you anymore? No one to call you a big blubbery manatee or a tub of lard. Admit it, deep down you must feel a bit empty, right? Are you kidding me? More like the opposite. I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. No need to worry, dear. I'll send you a few scheduled messages every day just to remind you how fat and ugly you really are. Don't forget to let me know when you reach 300 pounds. When that time comes, maybe a chunky monkey like you can join the circus. Just a friendly reminder. If you continue living such a fatty lifestyle without exercising and just eat, 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 you're gonna become like those women on TV who can't even walk on their own, you know. Those women who fall asleep while watching TV and have a slice of pizza stuck between the folds of their belly? You're not too far from that. By the way, I hope your child didn't get your fat genes or else she's gonna get her butt bullied by the whole society just like you! Are you done talking, Allison? I hope you'll be able to keep your big mouth running loose like that in prison. After all, you'll have plenty of cellmates to talk to. P prison What are you blabbering about? Did you hit your head or something? Oh, I know. Maybe your skull has become as thick as your belly that you can't even think straight anymore. Poor you. Well, I personally don't like repeating myself, but since it seems like you didn't understand my words properly, I'll say it one more time. You're going to prison, Allison, for the vile crime you committed against me and my baby. What? That prison thing again. You're just joking, right? I know you are. Do I seem like I'm joking with you? No, I'm being dead serious. I've already taken legal action against you, charging you with assault and battery. You shall be held responsible for the harm you inflicted upon me. I swear, your wrongdoing will not go unpunished. And you shall receive just retribution fitting for your actions. What have I done wrong? I mean, I did kick you down some stairs, but you didn't even get hurt. Besides, I was just trying to teach you a lesson. It shouldn't be taken so seriously, should it? Come on. Stop joking around with your own mother. You know it's not funny. I already told you. I'm not joking around, Allison. I'm not going to waste my time with you anymore. You're going to prison where monsters like you truly belong. It's the only way to make sure that you never hurt anyone else again. You've caused me so much pain and suffering, both emotionally and physically. You nearly caused me to lose my baby, and I'll never forgive you for that. You deserve to rot in prison for the rest of your life. At last, I emerged victorious in the case, and Allison was sentenced to imprisonment. She received the exact retribution she deserved for continually belittling me, subjecting me to servitude, exploiting me for errands, and even endangering my pregnancy. Shortly after Allison's incarceration, my sister Sharon found herself drowning in a colossal debt due to her excessive spending habits. Eventually, she reluctantly agreed to sell the house left to us as an inheritance from our father and divide the proceeds between us. Unfortunately for Sharon, her funds quickly depleted, leaving her unable to afford even the rent for her rundown apartment. After giving birth to my daughter Amelia, I swiftly returned to work and diligently saved up my own money. Combining the proceeds from the sale of the old house with my personal savings, I finally managed to purchase a new and beautiful home for both Amelia and me. From this point forward, my sole focus will be on living for myself and Amelia, dedicating as much time as possible to building a joyful life with her.